Kia ora and welcome to this quick video on how to take a design from Tinkercad and put it onto a 3D printer to print it as a model. So you need to take the design that you have created in Tinkercad. So here I've got a um, nose cone for a rocket that I've designed and you need to get that as a file that the printer can read. So to do that we go up to this corner up here, we click export and you need to pick one of these two file types. So STL is um, the major um, 3D model um, file type that a slicer can actually read, or you can use OBJ. These other two aren't used um, by our printer. So we'll click STL, and that should start downloading. Uh, if you're asked to save it somewhere, make sure you save it somewhere you know where it is. And then we are going to pull it down onto the desktop so we know where it is. Once you've got your file here, you need to open up a Cura software. Okay. Now, the best one I've got is the Ultimator Cura, um, which I've got here. And um, we'll go through this um, in a second. Now, if it's the first time you're opening up this software, you'll need to uh, make sure you've got your printer all set up because it will just be a generic um, printing profile. So to do that, um, you go up the top here and you go to Printer Settings. Now, you can add a printer and you can make it based on the Creality Ender 3, which is the type of printer we've got, okay? So you click Add Printer, and you should be able to add um, a non-network printer, and you scroll down, and you find either Creality or Ender 3, so Creality is here, and you just pick the Ender 3, okay? So that's the one we've got, the Ender 3. So you click that, and click Add, and that'll add the profile of our printer. So as you can see, I've got it added up here. All right, the next thing you've got to look at is getting the model from your desktop, the STL file, into this um, software to be read. So what you do is you click the little file button up here, and you find the file. So I put mine on the desktop, which should be over here. If I scroll down, I found, here it is. Just double checking that is the right file. Yep, that's the one, so click that and you see it's beautifully exported into here. So we're almost ready to start printing. Once you have your file um, successfully uploaded in here, uh, you can use your mouse to move around and look at things. Um, but the big thing over here is these are what you can do to scale your model. So uh, once you select the model by clicking on it, you have all these options highlighted. So this top one, it allows you to move it. Now you can move it to specific coordinates or you can move it around the bed yourself now what you want to make sure is it doesn't go near the edges here okay um, because you want it to print um, nice and successfully if you do it there it actually won't let you use it so you can move it back to the center now this might be too big when you design it in Tinkercad you might not have got your measurements quite right so you can scale it by a percentage okay so this tells you how tall um, sorry how wide it is how t uh, long it is and how tall it is Okay, so say you actually wanted it to be 45 centimeters, you can either go reduce it by 50% or you can type in here the um, size you want. So you can manipulate it here. Um, you want uniform scaling, which will scale it um, fully um, and not just this. So if I unclick this and just wanted to change the height to 45, I could do that and it would make it really flat but keep the um, size there. Sorry, I had to quickly change rooms because there was a class coming in. Um, next, you can see, uh, so once you're happy with the scaling of it, you can also um, manipulate how it prints. Now, sometimes it's good to put a print on its side or upside down to actually get a better print. Um, for example, this cone might actually be better to print upside down um, because the it is hollow. So you can have a play with that, and you can also quickly jump to preview to see where they put supports. So on prepare, anything red means it needs supports. And when you go to preview, if you've got your settings right, it should generate those supports. Now, one thing to note about supports is they sometimes make the surface rough. So you've got to weigh up whether or not it's important to print it that way or flip it upside down. And sometimes that can be trial and error. Secondly, you can mirror your um, print um, by flipping it. Uh, it sort of doesn't really work with a perfectly symmetrical um, thing uh, so that's quite good um, and this one you can uh, do some other interesting things with these so you can have a look at where um, supports are placed and all this sort of thing okay so yeah those are the main top four that you'll be using 
um, and then you can move on to looking at the actual settings of the printer to make sure that those are good so your printer can succeed. Cool. So what you'll then do is if this menu wasn't here, you click up here and you'll have loads of different settings. Now don't panic too much. The generic settings that are highlighted are, are you know, generally pretty good. So what you do is you click up here. Now if it is the first time you're printing something, just click low quality. Um, and see how good that prints and then if you need something a bit more um, detailed or whatever you can up the standard of printing as we go but low quality should be fine so you click that and then you go um, discard changes because I had some other settings for different types of printing I had before um, so you just discard those changes and um, it should be all good so a couple of things that you might want to check scroll down to supports is the first one and you click on here and you want to generate support. You always want to generate support. So you click that one and it will come up here. Now the diff types of um, support you can have are all here. Zigzag's pretty good and easy to break off. And you want it everywhere to ensure that this print is fully supported and doesn't fail. Okay. So other than that, you can leave everything how it is. Um, print it and then you can um, if the print fails you can go back and tweak these slightly um, but it could be something else so that's the first thing you go to support then you scroll down and you need to find um, the uh, build plate adhesion so you click this one which is under support and you need to pick a type of adhesion that's good okay I personally like brim okay and I make brim width that we want and I make that about uh, eight millimeters should be fine nice and small okay once you've um, done that you can pretty much leave everything else how it is the only thing I would change would be the material and to get good material extrusion it's often good if this particularly is your first time printing is to up that to 210 and your bed plate temperature to 60 okay those two things will just ensure that the print is less likely to fail, particularly on our printer. Okay, so once you've made sure all those things are right, so remember it's support, blade, build plate adhesion, and um, material, then we can make sure we have that sorted. I'm just going to tell my boys to be quiet. Hey, fellas, I'm just making a video. Can we just be quiet for two more minutes? Awesome. Thank you. So, uh, once you click that, you can get rid of that. Then the next thing you need to do is preview. And here you can see the brim that goes around. And underneath, you can see the um, supports that will be generated to make sure the top of the cone can be printed nice and safely. Now, all of that can be peeled off at the end. So, the red is the print, and the blue is the supports. Okay. So, what do we do now? We want to print our file. Okay. So, once we have that, I'll just move myself here, over to there, save to disk. Now you save to disk or save to USB or um, SD card, whatever is down there. I'm just going to save it to the desktop because you need to save it as a G code file. So I'll say uh, rocket nose cone. Okay, rocket nose cone. You want to make sure the file format is G code, otherwise the 3D printer can't read it. And I'll just save it to my desktop so I know where it is. Save. And then I'll go find the um, go find the, uh, the SD card to load it into my computer. And then I can um, take it to the 3D printer. And I can print it from there. So sometimes it can take a, a little bit of time. Um, one really good thing to do is to just, when you save the file, is maybe put how long it's going to take. Or make a note of that somewhere so you know how, when to come back to the 3D printer. So this is going to take six hours to print. Okay. Hopefully that answers any questions. Give it a go. If you need any more help, make sure you come and find me or um, and Mr. Hicks or Mr. Burkett is also very good at sorting 3D printers. Hope it works for you. Can't wait to see your creations. <laughs>